My name is Alper, and I've been working on creating the best 3D food models for the last 18 months. Um, today, I will talk more about how technology is affecting the food that we eat currently at the restaurants. Um, social media for the last five to 10 years has been changing the food we eat since, you know, we love shooting pictures of our food and share them on our social media. It created an immense amount of traffic back to restaurants since, you know, I am a person that goes to that restaurant, I shoot a picture, amazing looking picture of the food, I share it on my social media, my friends see it, they go to the restaurant. So companies, under, like people start understanding it and social media become one of the best mediums that creates traffic for restaurants. And we start seeing melting cheese videos recently or like crazy looking ice creams to, you know, cakes opening up or like all the amazing looking food. And recent studies show like 75% uh, percent of social media users are checking their social accounts before they go and try a restaurant. And, you know, phones are developing and, um, and what, what we say is like today, most food is created for the visual, which means restaurants create food, is Instagrammable food, so that people can share them on their social media. Um, and what we talk about is companies who created this change, like Facebook, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, and from technology providers like Google, Apple, and you know, Samsung. Um, so they are now investing heavily in augmented reality technology, and their investment will need a new type of media. So today, videos and pictures are pretty big on social, and we believe, or not believe, these companies are spending all the money into augmented reality. They will need a new type of content, which is 3D models. Uh, what we do is we bring food onto your table, right? So it can be on tablets, phones, social media, web, this is all coming into our lives from technology providers, and what we do is we bring 3D food into your life. Um, our main idea behind this, you know, when you think about augmented reality environment today, it's more like bringing something into it or in, like, augmenting your existing world with more information. Our main goal here is to you know, check, uh, raise check averages for restaurants, so the idea being you can show a $10 salad and compare it with a $25 steak. If you can push the idea of $25 steak, which can stimulate your brain into your like, decision making, you can push for uh, raised check averages. Uh, we do also projects with, where we use our technology for uh, dessert cart back in the day. So back in the day, we had dessert carts when you can where you roll the dessert card after the meal, people visually attract to that dessert so that they can make a purchase for upsell opportunities. We do the same thing with using augmented reality menus um, to make upsell. Uh, we do work with a bunch of companies uh, through Snapchat and Facebook. So we were lucky when Snapchat opened their platform for us to push our content. And we recently became a Snapchat partner You'll hear about our projects within the next couple months. We're um, bringing augmented reality food through Snapchat and Facebook through these brands. Um, but the main goal, as I mentioned, social media is an amazing platform to drive traffic to restaurants, and we are using that in an immersive way, uh, in an immersive way, or a different um, different way actually. Uh, we use a system called photogrammetry. Uh, there are a couple ways of scanning or creating 3D models. So I talked about you know, all these companies, Apple, Samsung, Facebook, uh, all these companies are investing in augmented reality and next generation content is 3D. So 3D content can be created, 3D artists can create a 3D model, or there are ways to scan exist real world items into, you know, as a 3D model. So we picked photogrammetry since we need perfect looking uh, realistic models, right? So uh, for humans, we have this un uncanny valley where if it's not realistic enough, it looks pretty weird and you cannot just look at the models in virtual environments. And, you know, it's not like a dinosaur which we never saw in our lives. You see this food every day. If something is like not good enough, if it's 80% good, it's not good. 
So we've been uh, working on making the perfect models in the last 18 months, and we think we did a great job on that. And most of the CGI content and companies been sharing is, you know, this burger here. So it looks not even real. It's more like cartoonish stuff. Um, so that's why we use photogrammetry to capture 3D models and bring them into life. Um, I'll show you a quick video of what we do. So th these are models, like colors a bit off on the presentation, but you can check our website. These looks pretty realistic. So we have use cases from in-restaurant use cases where they can provide tablets, and you can see the food on your table. Or we use you know, deep links in social media. You can press on a link anywhere, newsletters, you know, Facebook, Snapchat, you can bring the food into your life, basically. And from here, you can shoot a video, you can share it with your friends, your friends unlock it, and it creates a chain reaction. We use snap codes again on the menus. So instead of giving them the tablets or making restaurants to invest in tablets, you, if you have Snapchat, you can scan the snap code to bring the food into your life. And we do also work with companies, you know, in airports you should have seen these tablets. So we are integrating 3D assets into their platform as well. Um, so this is an example from our, one of our brand relationships. So you can bring any brand CPG or QSR, you know, like packaged goods or like real life looking food. We capture real, like realistic food models and push them through augmented reality or 3D viewers, or hopefully in the future it'll be you know, web-based systems. And like what we did, like in this, this is my partner's little baby, and you know, it's tricking the brain in a way, you know, even a, you know, I think she was six months when we shot this video. You know, you can trick the brain as this thing that you see there is real, so. Um, so from aspects of photogrammetry and what we do is our business has um, three different steps. So one is capturing the items, right? So we go to restaurants, we have a mobile system, and we are working on a system that we can sell to restaurants or food brands so that they can use this device to capture their food. And the second base is they upload these models or they're uploaded into a server where we process them and optimize them for augmented reality purposes. And we talk about an ecosystem which is being built by Apple, Samsung, and you know, Facebook, Snapchat, all these big guys are creating next generation AR platforms for us to push our content. So we, create the, we help you create the best looking food content, we process them, we optimize them for AR, and then we push it through different ecosystems where it can benefit to your company. Um, so when we talk about the ecosystem, we talk about social media, uh, currently, like Snapchat was the first company who opened their developer kit. And through Snapchat, we listened to Facebook F8, F8, F8. They basically create, they were working on the same stuff or they literally copied everything that Snap does. And you know, like, it's an amazing tool for us. You know, it doesn't really matter for us if it's Snapchat or Facebook, our content works any of those platforms. We create these AR menus, like we have an app. If you're a small restaurant, you can just uh, buy our SaaS-based model and push your uh, food models through a menu. We can integrate into existing apps. So if you have an app already, we can push our models into your app. Uh, we work with e-menu or kiosks, as I mentioned. So we are working with a couple clients where they have 100,000 tablets already sitting on the tables in the United States we can push our content through those e-menus. And we have this vision of uh, VR food court, which I, will give, like, which I will go into more details. And of course, we use it for advertising purposes through uh, media buys from um, display ads. Um, so here, this, this graphic shows uh, home orders or, or deliveries compared to at restaurant uses. So the future, more and more people order for, t uh, order for home deliveries. And we believe through these social media and like investments in AR and VR will lead us to a next generation food ordering. Um, so how, like, 
I will give, I'll give, get into details for this. So what we do for Snapchat and Facebook today is the model on, on your left, if you go to our Facebook page, you can see a 3D model. As you move your phone, you can see the 3D content. And soon, Facebook will allow you to press a button and push this content through augmented reality. And Facebook has uh, in a VR platform which called Spaces. So once the model is on Facebook platform, it works on uh, Instagram, uh, their messenger platform, their uh, Facebook app, and it will be available on Facebook Spaces as well. And through Snapchat, if you have Snapchat, these Snap codes, you can just hold your phone now. If you take a picture of this, I'm not sure if it will work from this distance, but you can unlock one of the food models so that you, know, you can access the content. So one of the main problems in augmented reality was distributing the content before this. Um, you should download an app to see a content, but now through Snap, in a couple seconds, you can access to the content. Um, so this is an idea for a VR food court. We created a mock version of Back to the Future, uh, Cafe 80s. So my, our vision on this one is, so 25 years ago, we had dial-up modems to connect to internet. When we were connected, we were you know, surfing the internet. From there, you needed to disconnect your internet connection to make a phone call to the restaurant to order your food. And Grubhub came in and they said, you know, you can order food now through internet and it will give you all the many options. And what we believe, like the kids for tomorrow, like five years from now, 10 years from now, kids will be in this immersive media in virtual reality. Um, they will be playing games and they will want, they, they want, want to disconnect from their like virtual worlds to order food on their phones, right? So what we believe is you're in virtual reality, you'll go to the virtual space or the restaurant or the food court, you see the old food on your table, then you can order it and you know, somebody will deliver it to you. And this idea today is actually becoming real through Snapchat. So on Snapchat, you can plot your phone, see the content, they have Snapcash, they can take orders or uh, actionable items so that you, know, you can, after you see the 3D model in your own space, you can order the food and somebody will deliver it to you. So we are connecting this immersive media, distributing it to you, you can access to the content, then you can order it and somebody will deliver it to you. And we also talk about the kiosks, you know, McDonald's says implementing all these kiosks where no cashiers. Uh, our content works on these, on, on these as well. So for me, um, I think this is pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, I guess I have some time, but you can talk more, I'll be here around. Or maybe I can just walk down and talk in person. How do you uh, plan to scale? I mean, can they yeah. Yeah, so actually I had a slide on that, I guess. I'm not sure where it go, but uh, so for now, uh, the technology, um, maybe I deleted it, sorry. So the technology right now is not capable of, like computer vision is improving and we choose photogrammetry because we get the best results on perfect looking models. Um, in the future, hopefully, like phones will have depth, depth sensors and more uh, detailed photo capabilities, and there'll be a scalability option without any additional hardware. Today, we designed a system where you can put your phone. It does uh, like it. We have a turntable, so you put your food here that you want to capture. We have a phone, so it turns the food. It, uh, the phone goes up and down, and basically through that device, you can scan it. So scalability comes through a hardware purchase for now. But in the future, we believe as the phones will have more capabilities through depth sensors and you know, more comp advanced computer vision, we believe people will be able to you know, hold their phones around their f food and they will capture the perfect food. But I don't see it's coming in the next three, four years, I guess, or in this quality. You can capture it today, and there are various um, techniques that you can do. But for food, we believe it should be close to real. So that's why uh, we use photogrammetry and additional hardware to do it. So uh, Yeah, so we are working on it. As soon as we manufacture it, we'll start selling it. Right now, we're just collecting interest. 
Thank you so much. A booth at the playground. Uh, we are partnering with The Economist, maybe I'll just two more minutes. So The Economist magazine has a vision on 2050, there won't be enough food in the world to feed everyone with enough protein. So there will be nine billion people. They are talking about artificial meats, insect-based proteins, and using secondary waste products to create some additional protein. So we partner with them to tell their story through augmented reality. So we have a boot. If you stop by, I can show you the storytelling capabilities of AR. And also, you can have a taste of some of our like insect-based protein bars. It's pre pretty cool. We are in the uh, playground area. Stop by. Thank you.